That's the thing to me, though, the message I've always tried to get out to people is there is this intimidation feeling that people have about going to a gym, which I totally understand if you're new mm-hmm. or going to a new class, you know, the the fear of, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and new people. Yeah. Or I've had people say to me, which I, I think is really interesting, you know, I, I'm not fit enough to do your class yet. When I'm fitter, I'll do your class. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. You get fit there. Come do the class. You do what you can do. Yeah, it's not. Take breaks. Yeah. It's not the CrossFit games that we're doing here. We're, <laughs> we're you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're turning up on a Monday we, morning. We or do this for fun. For fun. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what people's perception is until they try. And when they try, they realize, oh, actually, okay, I'll just take it at my pace. Hello, Andrea. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. This is very exciting. Okay, cool. Uh, excited <laughs> as well. So if you can introduce yourself a little bit of your background and, and let's start there. Okay. So um, my name is Andrea. I am 44. I am a mum, two kids, and I am a fitness trainer. Fitness trainer, freelance, I would say. So mm-hmm. it's not, it's something, it's part of me. It's, it's a hobby, but it's uh, a, li- a big part of my life. Um, I am married and I have a dog and I live in Dublin <laughs> um, and that is me. Cool. And so you mentioned that you were in the marketing and you move to fitness. So, so why fitness? Yeah, well, the story is very, very <clears throat> uh, strange because it's funny. So my husband would have been into fitness all throughout the time that we were together, really, he kind of did different things, dabbled in different types of sport or kickboxing and running and all that. And I never had any interest whatsoever. And I don't know why, looking back now, I don't know, I don't know why it wasn't on my radar, but it wasn't. Um, And the two of us were in our separate careers doing very well. You know, we're we're both um, really busy. quite full on and the kids were quite small at the time and um, I was traveling a lot uh, and it just our our lives were kind of just existing when I look back now that's what was happening we were just existing so I would be up early we'd be dropping the kids to the crash as soon as the doors opened in the crash then I would go to work um, and then one of us would dash back just before the crash closed it was you know it, the kids spent an awful lot of time not with us. Mm -hmm. And in between that, then obviously both of us had our jobs, which were full on. I would be traveling. I could be driving down to Cork and back in the day or go and back in the day. And, you know, it was just always, always go, go, go. And it came to a head a couple of years ago. So, um, six years ago now, I suppose we were just, you know, when you got home, you'd put the kids to bed after only having maybe an hour, an hour and a half with them because they went to bed early. Um, and then you would be back on the laptop answering emails or something like that, you know. So it just got to the point where we were both kind of saying to each other, what is this? This is this is not life. You know, this is there has to be more. There has to be a different way of doing things. So um, we decided together that one of us would take a career break. And because our roles, we were both doing very well and we both enjoyed what we did. It's not that we didn't enjoy it, but it was trying to decide, you know, which one of us would step back for a little while. Um, and just make the kids the priority and take the pressure off so that one of us could excel and push forward in the career and not have to worry about everything else that goes on in your life. You know, so the other person would kind of just support that, manage the kids, manage the house. And I suppose the thing, you know, okay, we had it finely tuned and everything was going well when things were good. But if the kids got sick, which they do a lot when Mm -hmm. they're small, um, the whole thing would be you know, we'd wake up in the middle of the night, somebody's been sick. Then you're the next morning. Who's, I have to go to work. Well, I have to go to work. You know, it was a constant juggle like that or trying to call on family or whatever to support. So we're, we wanted to take that stress away. So long story short, I took the career break because the company I was in was um, amazingly supportive and very pro family and could see that that was the right thing for me at the time. Um, and it just made sense because the industry I was in was a, a little bit more um, adaptable to that. You know, I could step back in a couple of years and and it would be like I hadn't left. Whereas my husband's job, it might have been a bit more difficult. You know, things move on so quickly <clears throat> in the industry he was in. 
so I did that. And then I'd say two, three, four weeks into it after the holiday, I was like, wow, I don't have to go to work anymore. You know, mm-hmm. I'm at home with the kids all the time. Then I started to realize, oh, this is it. This <laughs> is what we're doing every day. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to the crash or we're going to the park. And I actually realized I was quite lonely. Um, you know, so it was my, my job was everything, you know, as in the people I socialized with, it was all go, go, go. And then you're at home and it's you and little people. Um, and I didn't have a social network at all. Uh, and my daughter got invited to a birthday party that happened to be in a gym <laughs> that I <laughs> am now a member of, but at the time couldn't even find it. It's only 15 minutes away. And on the day of the party, I couldn't even find the gym. So, um, Dropped her to the party that day and went in to have a tour of the gym. Never stepped foot in a gym in my life. I don't think I owned, <laughs> did I own a pair of runners even? I'm not even sure. And, um, and which gym are you talking about? So this was Westwood. Yeah. yeah. In Leopardstown. In Leopardstown. Mm-hmm. And to be fair to Westwood and Leopardstown, which I, I just adore everybody there and that place, it changed everything. So when my daughter was at the party, I had a tour of the gym. I came home and said to <laughs> uh, Matt, um, I think I'm going to join the gym. When he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to join the gym, but it wasn't really for fitness. My motivation was more socializing. It was a purpose. I felt like I needed somewhere and s- something to commit to and go to. And they had a crash, which was a big part of it. So, um, you could take a break from your well, job. It, it just meant I could bring, uh, Jack was very small at the time. I could bring him with me, drop him into the crash, go do a group fitness class, which I had never done before. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. I had dabbled in things. I had done Bikram yoga and I had done a few little things, but I had never committed, you know, I, I just kind of now and again, but that day I stepped into that first group fitness class, which are Les Mills classes, because that's what Wes would do. I was like, this is this is pretty cool. Hadn't a clue yeah. what I was doing. <laughs> Hadn't a clue what was happening because anyone who knows them or maybe people who don't know them, they're choreographed to music. So it's fitness to music. Now I would, I like to think I have rhythm, but that first few times I was like, I don't know what's happening. Didn't know how to do a burpee, you know, all that kind of stuff. The simple basic things that you actually take for granted. I take for granted now, Yeah. but this was only, I was, you know, 39 um, doing this. So what came of it really was this whole world of people who are at the gym at half nine, 10 o'clock on a weekday morning, this whole world I didn't know existed because <laughs> I obviously would have been working full time. Yeah. Didn't know there was this whole world of people, mostly moms um, and some dads. Or retired people. Or retired people. Yeah. Or, you know, entrepreneurs, people yeah. who can <clears throat> be flexible with their time. True. Um, True. And from that day and the instructors I met that day to now, has, it has transformed, changed my life, you know, and I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but it literally did because I was on a career break. I was always going mm-hmm. back to my job. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't having a career change, Yeah. but I kept showing up. I used to go <laughs> three, four times a week, book into the crash and um, go in and do the classes. You get to know people, you get to know the faces, you start to feel like you're part of something. Um, my husband then joined the gym as well. He started getting into the Les Mills classes. The two of us were just absolutely loving it. And then I started to see changes physically. Like getting toned? Just, just getting fitter. Yeah. yeah. So I was never someone who was, I, I wasn't at the gym to lose weight. You know, I wasn't, I'm joining the gym because I want to lose weight. I'm joining the gym to get fitter. I think they were maybe in the back of my head somewhat, but um, it wasn't the main driver at the time. I just wanted something to do. Sorry, that's my dog barking <laughs> in the <Yeah>. background. <laughs> we'll just have to ignore him for a he's minute. Sad, he's looked out. Yeah, he wants to get in. Um, <laughs> we hope he gets bored. But um, so, yeah, so I I just got so into it. And then I started to see my body change. And then I started to see my stamina change because I could go through a class and not have to stop five times or six yeah. times, you know. And it just became a little bit like addictive, I suppose, because you see yourself improving and improving. And then I got to know all the instructors and I really just felt, and a lot of the instructors that were there then, um, I have, I now work with, which <laughs> is so lovely. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you kind of, you're in this little industry of people I would never have met. Was Rory be um, there back so then? Rory. Yeah. Rory yeah. was like one of the key people at the time because he was running. He was managing the studio. He was managing the studio. So, um, him and all the, the trainers that he, um, had with him, um, Ruby, yeah, yeah. You know, so there's fantastic people. 
that have since moved on as well in other other ways. But um, they were also encouraging and they were also supportive that you felt, you know, you really wanted to push, push, push. And what happened then was I actually was like, I think I might like to learn a bit more about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So why am I moving my body this way? And how do I lift that properly? And, you know, so I used to go to the group fitness classes. So let's say we move on 18 months or so. I, n- I always walked past the gym floor. I wouldn't look left or right at any machine or any mm-hmm. bar or rack. You know, I wouldn't have a first clue straight into the studio to do a class, be told what to do and job done. But I started to actually realize I actually want to know why I'm doing this. You know, what's the what's the purpose? So I decided to do a fitness instructor course. Um, a few months of training. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it was like 16 weeks of um, part time. There was no, absolutely no intention by me to teach or be an instructor. It was purely self-development. Mm-hmm. It was just, why am I doing these moves? How could I get better at them? You know, I'd be in body pump, let's say, obviously you co- you teach body pump, I teach body pump. You would hear the cues and you would hear um, how you should do the exercise. But I never really understood, you know, why am I doing this exercise? What am I working and how could I get better? And that's why I wanted to do the the course. And I did the course and literally towards the end of the course, um, there was an opportunity to meet some gyms around Dublin. They came in for like a a career night and um, F45 were there and they Mm -hmm. were only about to open or had just opened their first studio. And uh, I was like, I'll just go meet them. So I met them and they gave me my first job. (laughs) And, you know, at this point, I was like, (laughs) extended my career break. I was like, I'll give this a go. couple of shifts a week and I kind of felt if I didn't do it then I was never going to do it you know it was like I'm in it now I've just done the the qualification I've literally just got qualified in the December 2017 and they offered me a job Christmas week and I was like if I don't do it now I'll chicken out of this it's actually good to have just a few classes so you don't have to make it like 20 classes to make a living so it's actually less stressful less painful yeah exactly it was a much. choice you know and that was a very privileged position i mean don't get me wrong when we decided that one of us was going to take a career break we knew that was going to change our lifestyles mm-hmm. i mean we were going to have to adapt to that and you know changes in income and stuff but we were we felt the the trade off was was more important being with the kids was more important you know and being obviously that and we could we could adapt but um yeah i never looked back then because like that there was a whole industry of trainers and people you know i have friends now that are friends i met in f45 who i would never have met had i not stepped foot in the gym that day yeah um and it all just started to stem from there and then i was you know it, it was very organic and i know that word is a bit but it was very organic. I I didn't go seeking it out. It kind of all started happening. Um, And then I was like, I'm so into Les Mills and I so love that style of class that why am I not learning how to teach them? So then I went on and did my first Les Mills module and it all just kind of snowballed from there, you know? And I suppose I felt in a way, if I can be the person who can't run to the shop there was Facebook memory came up. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but at the time a Facebook memory came up there recently. I was, I had put up a post that I had run two and a half K nonstop. And I was so thrilled with myself. <laughs> now, this was very, very early on. And I remember looking back on, oh my God, look how far I've come now that, you know, I will run distance now and I can do classes now and I wouldn't think twice, but I was a person who couldn't do those things. And or felt, you know, it was never going to be something I would do. And now I am. Hmm. So if I can do it, then anybody can do it, was my thoughts on it. And I think as a trainer, I'd like to think it's very inspiring for people to see, okay, she's she's teaching this class, but I, I know that she, you know, she wasn't always into fitness. It's not that she was yeah. at 18, went into fitness and has been always doing it. If she's saying she's only done it in the last couple of years, then I can do it. You know, that's how... I hoped it would be Um, and that I can connect with a demographic that maybe not everyone in, you know, in the gym does because the demographic I'm like, I'm the mom with two kids who, you know, I'm in my forties. It's again, another cliche, but it's never too late. Yeah. You know, this kind of stuff. I'm Um, 39, by the way. 
So yeah, <laughs> you're on the cusp of uh, the best decade of your life. Um, but it's no kids yet. But it's true. I, I, like honestly, you know, you you do start to find what's important to you when you're hitting that four o forties decade. You do start to realize what's important. Yeah. What am I into? And now, fitness is just part of my life. It's just part of our lives. Like myself and my husband, we will train in the gym or here together or separately. Um, we've subsequently got friends who have gotten into it. And during <laughs> the whole COVID situation, and you know, when we could have someone here or two people here, we had friends coming to train who had never done it before, who now have gone on and just become completely obsessed. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's you just, guys are addictive. yeah, but this is it. Like people were like, <laughs> Les Mills, what's Les Mills, you know? And, and yeah. that's just now I say Les Mills because that's what worked for me and that's what I enjoyed. But it was popular. It was structured. It, but, but there's a, it is good. Probably. Yeah. I, I, like I, I'm passionate about them. I like Les Mills myself. Yeah. I think I'm passionate, but that doesn't mean there's like, I don't know what you want to go Peloton or there's whatever other brands of, you know, exercise. It's not about the Les Les Mills. Mills. Les Mills also has a community, but the gym has community. Exactly. So it's not about, to me, I was a CrossFit or whatever. It's not about what type of class you do. It's finding the class that's for you and finding the people that are for you. You know, again, they kind of say, find your tribe. Yeah. But it's true. You know, Um, you know, you might have people, I often joke about this in, in the gym and David Lloyd, you know, I'm not a spin person. I don't enjoy spin. Um, and just because I say I love exercise, I'd be the first person to say spin is not for me. <laughs> um, I just don't particularly enjoy it. That's okay. I you do know? love spin. But I love so it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And then there's it's other people everyone. who say hit is not for me. So I love hit. I love burpees. I love that kind of, that's not for everyone. Yeah, everybody's different. So everybody's different. So the thing is you have to find your thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's how it all progressed. And then I went on and trained as a yoga teacher, um, which was fascinating and really, really good. But what I learned from it was I'm not a yogi. It I thought like I was. I, th- I think I, I'm more into power and strength. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying stretching is not important and yoga is very mm-hmm. important, but I didn't enjoy teaching it as much as I thought I would. Um, I enjoy participating but I didn't enjoy teaching it. So Mm -hmm. that's something I learned. (laughs) The dog crying, sorry. (laughs) Um, He'll be fine. Yeah, he will be fine. No rain out there. Um, He, yeah, so, you know, you have to kind of go through all these things to find your thing. And I often say that to people who ask me, you know, where do I start? It's like, you're going to have to start by going to a class, deciding whether you like it or you don't like it. Try them all. Try them all. all. Yeah. Scratch it or, you know, you might just find your... And sometimes we don't like class because there's something we are not good at and that's what we need. Let's yeah. say somebody lacking flexibility and they go to a body balance class or yoga class and realizing, wow, my hamstrings are so tight. Yeah. yeah obviously you need that and you should, you know, someone participating would benefit from having it, let's say once or twice a week, you know, and, and then maybe they can ditch it then when their flexibility is good and somebody might be doing you know, body pump class, realizing they don't know how to clean and press. But again, they can ask instructors and uh, people like us for help. Yeah. And I th- I, that's the thing to me, though, the message I've always tried to get out to people is there is this intimidation feeling that people have about going to a gym, which I totally understand if you're new mm-hmm. or going to a new class, you know, the the fear of, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and new people. Yeah. Or I've had people say to me, which I, I think is really interesting, you know, oh, I'm not fit enough to do your class yet. When I'm fitter, I'll do your class. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. You get fit. There. Come do the class. You do what you can do. Yeah, it's take not. breaks. Yeah. It's not the CrossFit games that we're doing here. We're, <laughs> we're you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're turning up on a Monday we, morning. We or do this for fun. For fun. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what people's perception is until they try. And when they try, they realize, oh, actually, okay, I'll just take it at my pace or whatever, you know? Um, so, so I, I get great enjoyment, a huge passion out of that, like teaching a class where the room is, you know, full of people, all different fitness levels, all different capabilities, different injuries, whatever the case may be. People do what they can do. I train with them. We all work out together. Yeah. 45 minutes later, we all leave feeling great. Yeah. For I mean, me, it seems like uh, the more people you have, there are more energy in a room and together we train harder. If you would do the same workout on your own, you possibly just go like, oh, 
you know, you, you take it back a little bit, but once you're there, I mean, it's something buzzing between the participants and us. We, we, we push harder together. Oh, like a hundred percent. And there's days, you know, I often say this in my classes when I turn up, you know, people might say, oh, I was dreading this today, but I always love it after. And I said, don't, be under any illusions. The trainers often dread it too. You know, we were turn up going, oh my God, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Or, oh God, I don't know if I have this in me today. Pull the lower back or something. Exactly. Sorry. But as soon as that timer mm-hmm. starts and the music starts and you're in it and you get your, you get the vibe from everybody else, you know, you get the, the energy back. Um, it's just, I just think it's the, the most amazing thing. It's the cheapest therapy <laughs> tonic that you could ever have exercising. Yeah. You know, and whether that's running and longevity as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, if it's investing in your f- the future, you you know, that's that's what you're always doing. Yeah. Um, particularly women. You know, you you try. You know, I'm Hormones always trying to say changing as well. Yeah, or bone kids. density. You know, yeah, and osteoporosis yeah. and all the things that we lovely things that we've to deal with as we get older. You know, and mm-hmm. investing now. And I suppose what I don't like to hear is when people try and you know, at this moment say, ah. Oh, it's too late for me or, you know, oh, it's uh, not helpful. where would I start now? You're like, no, it's never, never too late. And I love that because if you go into David Lloyd in the gym we're working in, you'll see every age category in a class. You'll True. see young girls. Teenagers. Yeah. Which I think is amazing because it wasn't on my radar when I was in my early twenties. I've never seen um, that before. Young, young people. Well, I, I actually haven't. First time I was in the class was... 11 years ago in Westwood Sandy Mount and I was doing body attacks, body pumps, spin class and I fell in love with it. And then yeah. I became instructor by being inspired by it. Yeah. And I played sports. Uh, I was doing martial arts. I was doing cycling and all that stuff. And when I got it, I was like, this is what I was missing. Yeah. I really straight ahead. I was doing classes. I was like, this is what I need. Yeah, I exactly. Really, You've and I few... never seen it. And I was, I was almost 30. This, this, is, so this is the thing. No. I, I just don't think people, and then you get a bit of confidence, don't you? Because once you, you're in it, then you might try something new. So I kind of tried a bit of boxing, which I loved, and a bit of kickboxing, which I loved. So when you're in it, you kind of are more, you know, confident to try new things. Or yeah. you're, you, you're, you have a network of people now that are going to give you new experiences, new opportunities. And that's what happened for me. You know, you kind of just start chatting to people and things come up and, you, you know, it's, Look, I could talk about it all day, hmm. how important I think it is. But um, first and foremost, it's it, it's to be part of your lifestyle. You know, I, I, there's another side of this, which is you obviously don't want to be someone who's completely addicted or overtrains or, you know, can't do without it. I would train every day. I'm not going to say I don't. If you follow my Instagram or something, I probably have something up every other or <laughs> most days. But that doesn't mean I go at it 150 percent every single day. You know, yeah. I don't. But I do move every single day because I know. I'm going to feel better mm-hmm. for doing it. Now, also, it's important to know the times when not to do it. I think yeah. that's really important. When you too. feel burnt out. Yeah. For when don't be pushing when it's just not the right or thing. Or when there are more important things to do. Exactly. But I mean, in this house here now, you know, like yesterday evening, we had a lovely chill out day, nice day on Saturday. And I just felt the need to do something, you know, and my husband was the same. And we just turned on a class here and we did it. Now, that doesn't mean it's a go, 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 you know, but it was a great class and we both felt great after it releases endorphins. You feel like you've um, moved. Body combat. Body combat. I seen your post. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then we both yeah. felt great. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know what, uh, the good thing is about following people who are just that one step ahead. Uh, let's say if you're someone who is a bit, you know, lazy and lacking motivation and following someone like you, you always get ideas like, oh, well, she does this. And like, oh, well, I can try it. We, we are people of, we get, get inspired by things. Yeah, I have a mixed, I have mixed feelings about the Instagram sometimes, I suppose, because sometimes I'm like, I hope that that's the way it come ac- comes across and that I am sharing it. Or only. intimidating people. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't want it to be, look what I'm doing. You know, why aren't you doing it? I, I, I hope that's not what it is. I'm, I always try and say, I'm doing it. So, you know, maybe you might want to try it or it's, it's hopefully motivating is it's, what I like to it, think you know, it is. It's, it's your page and you do whatever you want. Well, this is true. And if people you know, follow you, they're following you. If they don't, if they don't. People always can misinterpret whatever they want. So, mm. you know, just thinking like, what if, what if. We just have to follow our passion. If if you do something you're passionate about, you, you make a post about it, 
we should not feel guilty about somebody feeling small and lacking confidence and mm. feeling negative about it. That's their, yeah, no, that's, that's true. their problem, you know. But uh, you know, if they're ever put up, it's it's generally for hopefully to inspire somebody to move. That's usually what I'm hoping to do, or you know. But um, so that's my story, <laughs> long and <laughs> convoluted <Extended> story. <laughs> Um, but that's probably answered most of the questions on the list too. But um, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah. So there's another question. Um, so you mentioned you, you're in your 40s and you have two kids. So how do you stay lean and fit? So how do you combine it with nutrition? What do you guys eat? So this is um, a topic I'm always kind of wary of. So I, I'm not somebody who um, consciously counts calories or anything like that. Not that that's there's a problem with that. Um, it depends what your goal is um, or that I'm looking to stay lean or anything like that. I like to stay active, consistently active, and I like to eat the foods that I think are going to help me in that way. So I know it's intuitive in a way. Like when I did my course, obviously there was a nutrition element to it. You learn, uh, you know, your macros and what kind of ratio you need. You know the good foods from the bad foods as such. But I would never deny myself anything ever. Um, I know what I put in my mouth is either going to be, you know, okay, this is good food um, as in it's going to help with after my training or this isn't, this is a couple of chocolates, but I'm going to bloody enjoy them, <laughs> you know? And I, so I'm aware more so, you when know, you train every day, you can have a little excess sugar because it goes to muscles. It, exactly. And I don't want to make light of it because if obviously there's people who are trying to lose weight or <clears throat> whatever the case may be, you have to be a little bit more disciplined and you do have to, to watch those things. But when you get to a point where, um, I'm aware that I'm very active, I'll always hit my steps every day. Um, I will train most days um, and then I'll try and eat well around that. Um, so I know that I, um, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. But what I choose to eat, will there'll be a conscious decision, yeah, you yeah. know, as to what it is. So um, and then around that, I love a glass of wine. <laughs> Most people who know me know that I love <laughs> a bit of chocolate. I love I generally probably wouldn't go like I, I'm quite aware of portions and I'm quite aware of. I've said this to people before about substituting things. So if you're someone who's big into your cappuccinos, for want of a better example, you know, liquid calories is, I suppose, something that people aren't probably as aware of. And maybe having the four cappuccinos a day um, is Extra liquid sugar. calories yeah. that you are not aware milk. of. Not, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with milk again. So this is where I don't want to demonize anything. It's but, additional calories. But it's knowing that, OK, you've consumed four cups of additional calories there. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could make them four Americanos with a drop of milk and it would reduce the number of calories you're having in that. If you want to have a cake with your coffee, maybe don't make it the biggest slice of cake or maybe have a slice of a couple of biscuits that are a little plainer or whatever. You know, you can make substitutions um, if you need to or if you're aware that it's just knowing it's intuitively knowing. And I know I have a couple of friends who are nutritionists and they do talk about intuitive eating quite a lot, which is, you know, I know by checking today, did I have my veg? Did I have any green veg today? Have I had my protein? You know, um, just the five a day. I mean, I'll always be aware of that, but I'm not tracking it. Yeah. You know, um, and on days where I'm not as active, I generally probably am more aware of that as well. Probably won't consume as much. So I'm not a calorie counter or, a, <clears throat> you know, a food tracker as such, because I don't have a goal that I want to hit. Um, I just want to live a healthy lifestyle. So if you're talking to someone who's a bodybuilder or you're talking to someone who's um, a powerlifter or someone who's looking to lose weight, their goal for food and nutrition is going to be completely different to course, mine. Yeah. Whereas I'm kind of trying to be the person who's just, I'm just the man at home who cooks the dinners. You know, I'm not going to cook something for me and something different for everybody else. Or We're all going to eat the same thing. So we generally try and have the balance lifestyle. Um, and the kids know the same. The kids are... I wanted to ask something with the kids because... Obviously, you have two of them, so you have some experience. Yeah. Uh, I was asking you a question there, like, before we started, and it's like, like oh, well, you know, how you make kids eating healthy? And so you tell me what you, what you said. So the kids don't knowingly eat healthy. They eat what's in our kitchen here is generally a balanced lifestyle. So they know um, 
I mean, we have a goodies press there, right? We have a press full of goodies. The kids will ask for goodies all so day long. So it's not long. like forbidden for them. Absolutely not. And they they will have goodies in the day. I could argue maybe a few too many when it comes to their teeth. But um, they know, like, they will have their porridge in the morning. They will have their fruit during the day. They'll hear me ask them, you know, like, they will never ask for goodies until they've had their meal of some description, you know, lunch, dinner, whatever. But and how old are they now? They are 11 and 7. But they they know, you know... I'll ask, did you have, what fruit did you have today? I'll always ask that every day. You'll hear one of us asking that, what fruit did you have today? And they'll go get something out of, you know, because kids are kids. Like they're going to eat their body weight and crap if they can, you yeah. know, but um, they, yeah, they're very good. They, they they are aware that they can have a bit of everything in balance. And um, my daughter is a, a dancer and she's competes in dancing and she knows how important because her dance teachers will tell her how important nutrition is, how she has to fuel her body for the dancing. So she's aware that she has to eat um, good food, good bit of food, and um, that it's about balance, you know. And my son, you know, he's kind of struggling to find his thing, his passion, his fitness. He was in karate. He's not so sure anymore. But he knows as well, if he sits on the Xbox all day, doesn't get any activity, that I'm going to challenge him when it comes to him wanting to eat a bowl of goodies that night, you know, I'm going to say, well, what did you do today? You know, what have you been? Did you go out and run around or, you know, so they are aware. You're also tough parents. Yeah, but tough in an, I don't mean, I don't mean to say like, yeah, we're not, Yeah, you know, but they, they are aware that Mm -hmm. there's, um, well, I guess that gives them good, um, education for life because you make them aware once they're young, I think it's better than just letting them eat whatever their body will get inflamed and overweight. And then until they are 20 and they learn anything about nutrition, realize like, wow, I missed 20 years. So I guess it's good to be, you know, that type of push on the kids. Yeah. Well, I I just think it's it's an an awareness of general. I mean, they see me make protein, you know, oats, overnight oats and stuff. They see me put protein into things. They see me making eggs every day. They know, you know, turkey burgers and chicken every, every day in this house. (laughs) So they, they know the good things to eat. But if you tell somebody they can't have something, they want it more. They want it more, right? So yeah. it's more about having a bit of everything and knowing, educating yourself as to if I eat this, am I aware that this is going to be, you know, if I have this big cake and I'm going to really enjoy it, be pre- if you're going to have the cake, enjoy the cake, you know, but be aware. Yeah. Don't be, you know, if you're someone who's trying to lose weight, don't be at the end of the week wondering why something didn't happen. If you had that cake and then you still consumed all week the same way, it's the finding the balance and enjoying the good times and then maybe being a little bit more disciplined the other times. Yeah. Now that's very simplistic. Just to be more disciplined and not disciplined, just to have the the ratio of progress. I think it's just being aware. Yeah. But like I said, it's going back to your goals because this whole topic of nutrition, I'm I'm always very wary of because everyone has different issues um, and everyone has different goals. So it's not a one size fits all because that happened to me before. People might say, you know, what do you eat every day? Because they, you know, they want to know. I said, there's no point in me telling you what I eat every day because that's nothing to do with your body is completely different to my body. Um, what my activity level is completely different to your activity level or, you know, we're all doing different things. But it might so. actually inspire someone to do small <clears throat> adjustments. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, no, I, no. I, I would understand that somebody could not look at your uh, physique and then go like, hmm. Well, so, so what does she eat? And you, you tell them there's no f- magic formula. It's just basic exactly. food. It's a, it's that's a the balanced thing. food. It's no magic formula. And that's formula. what people need to know as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's why they're curious because they still don't understand what the good foods are and maybe proportions and. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. So I'd always be quite nervous, not nervous, but I'll always say that, you know, like, look, I can tell you that the, the foods I find good and high in protein that allow me to kind of hit my macros if I want to do that each day, if I'm aware that I want to get X amount of protein in. And what would um, that be for you? So I'll roughly? always have, yeah, so I've protein. Like amount, so how many grams do you aim uh, for? Oh, well, I don't, I don't weigh anything. Like roughly. So, but like know. for me, I think it's, isn't it roughly uh, 1.2 grams or it's 2.1 grams per kilo body weight, it's roughly like that. So maybe it's 120 grams for me a day. Now that's quite a lot. Cause that's you like think about a building portion. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a lot because obviously you think but about you in an egg or in turkey, you know, there's, you have to eat quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, um, yeah, I can't remember. It was, is it two grams per kilo? I think it is. I, like I said, I don't. Yeah. Two trans- grams yeah, for I muscle don't, building. Yeah. Um, 
fixate on that 1. stuff. 1.2 grams per kilo will be more athletic and yeah. 2 grams will be more like a muscle building if you do power training. Yeah, so there you go. So you're and more you, into and it. And you do pull-ups and you do all that stuff. Yeah, so, but I'm know. not there literally calculating it. I'm just aware yeah. that every meal is going to have some chicken or some turkey or some eggs or some tuna mm-hmm. or something. Like that's yeah. generally what it is. But it repairs your body. After all of that, and the, obviously a lot of water and... Don't get me wrong. I love my wine and I love my downtime and I love my snacks and all that kind of stuff. And I won't deprive myself of those. Um, so it's important. Balance, such an overused phrase, but yeah, look, yeah. it is what it is. But um, sorry, is Milo driving you nuts right now? <laughs> no, is it okay? He's fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So that's the, so the nutrition side of it, the kids are just, the kids don't know any different. Like that couch, you can't see it here. Obviously the couch gets pulled every day and the weights get brought out onto the floor and I'll be doing an exercise or Matt's doing an exercise or there'd be a Zoom on during COVID and there would have been people mm-hmm. on Zoom. They don't bat an eyelid that their mom is doing burpees in the middle of the floor. It's yeah. just normal, you I know? Think, and I, I think they just you can tell them all about fitness and all about healthy lifestyle. But if they see it, they, you know, they don't do what you tell them. They do what they see you guys doing. That's my inspiration, I believe. hundred percent. Um, there's definitely that element of monkey see, monkey do, I yeah. suppose, you yeah. know, they, it's right there in their, in they their, see it. In their it's face. just part of our it's, lives. It's there. Yeah. They wouldn't, you know, where's dad? He's gone to the gym. Where's mom? She's gone to the gym. So yeah, so that's just they're it. possibly going to you know? grow up uh, doing activities. Well, I hope so, and that I hope will be a positive inspiration. For yeah, them. I hope, and I hope it's not the other way because that you know, it's not too intense but here. It's their on choice them. as well. Yeah, yeah, but it's not too intense on them. It's not that we ask them to do workouts or anything. Yeah. You know, they have their own things. But maybe um, when they get older, they realize like how how important it is to feel confident and be in certain shape uh, because maybe that's what they will desire. You know. Yeah. And the shape thing again is probably not, it's not a priority. It, it, it's a, it's a by factor or a byproduct of what, you know, like I said, my thing was all about socializing and finding a community. <laughs> there we go. I found that first. Yeah. I needed someone to talk to. Yeah. And I'm going to be really honest, like as a mom at home, when you're at home alone with young kids, it's very, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, when you lose that identity that you had, you know, I mean, that might be associated with the career you had. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very tough and you need to find new outlets and there's only so many walks to the park you can do. And there's only so many kids groups you can go to. So I guess all... you're happy with the decision. Yeah. Oh it, man. It turned 100%, out well. Yeah. yeah 100%. No regrets. No regrets. I mean, uh, I don't get me wrong. I, I hope that someday I will go back to the marketing, but on, a more balanced, yeah. you know, when the kids are older and we have more time, but at that time in our lives, this was the, it was the right decision. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it just changed everything. So. But even with the fitness instructing, we were mentioning, and I was talking to other instructors before, it is actually good if you don't have to do it like a full-time job when you have to throw in like 15, 20 classes a week and burning out, like literally burning out early mornings and late evenings and just class after class. And it's just a huge tax on the body. It's nice to teach three, two, three, four or five classes, let's say not yeah. 20 and have a good balance there as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm very lucky that that's the case for me. And I mean, I know so many amazing, inspiring instructors who are young, a lot younger than me, and this is their career and they're phenomenal at what they do. And I, I say to them all the time, like, I don't know how the stamina they have, um, and, you know, you have to be clever in how you teach classes if you're going to do volume of classes, you know. So because I'm only doing a few a week, I can go at it physically and, you know, really work out because I get to work out too. Yeah. If I was doing this every day or things change tomorrow and I had to work more, I wouldn't be as physical every day because you phys- you can't do that. You know what I mean? More. Well, you'd, you'd injure yourself and then you're out of the game completely and, you know, you can't earn. So because I'm only doing a few, I'm lucky that I can kind of do it that way. But um yeah, like it's, it's a tough thing. It's a tough physic physicality wise. It's tough on instructors, you know, to, to keep that going. But also there's a skill in, uh, floor coaching, you know, you don't, and there's a, I know so many that are so good at it. You don't always have to be up there doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing that because it's a choice. Yeah. I want to work out because I'm there, but you know, you can get the most out of people by standing there and telling them what to do yeah. and motivating them that yeah, way. And yeah, yeah. um, I think the key to that though, is them knowing 
that you do walk the walk and you do this kind of training. You have to look the shape as well. well you have to, you they have, have to, to know that you yeah, do it yeah. because me telling you to do 20 burpees when I haven't done one ever is not exactly going to inspire you, is it? So it helps. Yeah. It you helps. know, you, when, when the participant is like, okay, well, I know she does this kind of training. She's not asking me to do something she wouldn't do herself. That's different, you know, so, um, so yeah, it's not always, I mean, you can floor coach and be so inspiring to people. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. And that comes down to kind of educating them. But you also need to know your, you need to the, know your stuff, uh, you know, staff and you know, uh, need to know your volume as well. Let's say like, if I had a bad sleep and I had like two classes, you know, like before that, I have a one intense class, which I cannot just floor coach. That floor coaching will be actually the one that I'm not going to do the class because I know I have to pull back on the volume. Yeah, and, exactly. And still, as you said, like you can still motivate them. You know, you don't have to everything do. It's it's more like bringing that energy and that vision of like what we're gonna do and make a plan. You know, and they just Absolutely. follow you. But, and you also, say. even more importantly, technique. Yeah. Because you know, it's it's great to teach a head class and do the head class, and I'm very aware I do it, and we're all jumping around, and that's great. But what's so important as well is technique and showing people how to do an exercise properly. Yeah. So. You know, you don't always have to be jumping around the stage because people are trying to copy what they see. Yeah. So sometimes it's actually like, no, listen to my cue or I'm going to watch you do it and yeah. we're going to get you to do it right. Because we all want to be in this for the long game. Yeah. You know, no one, I mean, we know how easy it is to pick up a weight the wrong way. You see people do deadlifts. I've seen it on the gym floor, you know, and you just go, oh my God, this is going to end badly, <laughs> you know, long term because yeah. they're not lifting properly and they're whatever, whoever gave them their instruction, YouTube or whatever. Yeah. You know, so a coach's job is to inspire, to Educa motivate, educate. to educate, mm -hmm. you know, it's all of those things. So some days you jump around and we all jump around together. Great. Some days you stand there and you speak and you show them how to do it or you push them. That's the other side. People get comfortable lifting the same weight. You can walk into their face and go, well, well, you can just say, <laughs> yeah, not distance, anymore. Yeah, distance. yeah. <laughs> but you can say, pick up the next plate, pick up the 10. And now you only say that when you know the participant and you know that they can, mm -hmm. but, um, or, you know, move a little faster or give me two more or whatever the case may be. It's because you know them, you know, otherwise, you know, you could really hurt somebody. You hurt, you have to earn it as well with their trust. You just don't go to some person who we never seen before and start telling them to put more weight on it. Exactly. You know people exactly. and, and if you can afford to go to them and, and encourage them. Yeah, it depends exactly. depends what connections you have with them. And you know by looking at people whether they're ready, you know, because we all plateau, you all, and this is something, sorry, I should have said as part of this and more so the Les Mills side, variety is so important, variety of training. So people get themselves into a rut of turning up for the same class, doing the same thing, and you get bored and then you don't see results and then they stop and you got to be doing different things. Yeah, yeah. You got to mix it up. So, you know, we it's all not even good to do one thing. Like, let's say if you're just running, you're basically wearing out your knees. Yeah. And you some do. people running is their thing. You know, I mean, I'm not that person. <laughs> yeah. I do run, but I, I don't do it as my thing. But if it's your thing, good for you. But it's definitely important to supplement that with you know, the yoga and the stretching or the core work or the bit of yeah. strength work. Um, but otherwise you, everybody, we're human beings where, you know, we, we get bored, you know, you need a new, um, stimulation. Yeah. And you need a new way new of training, learn, new learning. Or what I'll say is I would consider myself fit. I would say I am fit, but I have gone to classes that I had never tried before and thought I was going to have a heart attack <laughs> because I had never, I didn't train that way The same because you adapt yeah. to what you do, you know? So, um, I think it's really important to mix it, mix it, mix it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very important to do resistance training, no matter what your age. Bond density. No matter what your age. Mass um, mass. Yeah. So whether it's Layla's older dance teammates in their teens who wanted to get stronger at the dancing, mm -hmm. lift some weights. Yeah, yeah. If you are, you know, a lady in your 50s, 60s, menopause, whatever, lift some weights. You know, so there's, I'm not saying you have to be on the gym floor <laughs> doing but, but you know what? PBs. It's, it's, it's some of the most comfortable training. Uh, when you know what training, you're doing. When you know yeah. what to do and how to do it, you don't have to even be sweating. Yeah. You yeah, be, exactly. You, you know, it's like just for those who listen and or watch and, and have no idea what resistance training is, you know, like basic exercise, push, pull, 
leg squats, uh, leg press, uh, some core planks mm. or whatever crunches, and you do three sets of 12, let's say, mm. and you can increase it to five sets of 10 or whatever, you go heavier weights, resting around 30 to 60 seconds. So that means, you know, you train for 30, 40 seconds, and then you're going to take a one minute break. Mm. It's not that hard. You're actually mm. resting more than you're training. And you can take your time. It doesn't have to be the heaviest weight out there. It could be 60% of your max rep. So mm. it could be comfortable enough. Yeah. And I think it goes back to the point I'm sitting as the person who's only new to this. And I know all too well that feeling of walking in and feeling completely intimidated. So I understand that it's easy for us to say this now. But for someone who's never done it before, it's very, very intimidating. And I have a friend who started joining me once a week in the gym to try and some strength training. And I had forgotten. I take it for granted. You know, let's walk up to the squat rack. And it, she never walked up to a squat rack before in her life. So she didn't know how to move the adjusters, you know, for the height. She didn't know how to get the safety racks out. I just, I forget because I'm like, this is my thing and I'm into it. So you have to go all the way back and show someone those things. Now we're six, seven weeks on or something. And she's going by herself to the gym and she is loving it. Yeah, And that is the thing. I was like, she's comfortable in the exercises that she knows. We're going to stay with the exercises that she knows. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. She's looking at her weight and she's trying to build it and she feels great. I was like, there you go. Yeah. That's all you want. And for those new to this, uh, you know, you can join a gym and, and get a, sometimes most gyms will have a free assessment. <laughs> uh, so they give you a program, they teach you how to use it. So for those who are intimidated or shy, just join a club, a good club, ask for a good trainer and, and you know. Absolutely. And, and yeah. get started with someone who is professional in it. Absolutely. Well, like the, Don't the end worry of the day, YouTube. it's like anything, you know, you can do your hair at home. You can do your nails at home. You can do your exercise at home. You can do all these things at home, but there is no substitute for a professional at the end of the day. That's going the to a hairdresser, experience. going to a beautician or whatever, you know, we've all learned that through COVID, going through a personal trainer, someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who's going to be able to guide you long term to whatever you want to achieve. But I'd also say going to a class is really good to start. Yeah. Just, be, just to learn simple exercise movements. Yeah. I, again, I had someone in my class a few months ago and I had burpees in the class and they came up to me at the end and they were like, could you just show me how to do the burpee again? And I was like, oh my God, I, sh I should have been on that now. I should have been, I should have done the burpee demo at the start because I, I just made assumptions and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You know, and I was like, wow, I need to be aware that people in the room don't always know the move, you know, and it's intimidating to watch someone jump to the floor, <laughs> face plant the floor, you know? Yeah. So I was like, actually, yeah, you, this should be for everybody and everyone should feel that they can try it. Now, just because, you know, you may not like it then, you go, no, that's not for me. Fine. Or well, offer options. So if you, options. if you don't want to do burpees, uh, do squats, do plank. Yeah. But you know? when you go into a class, at least you get to see the variety of movements. You get to see all, you know the jumping lunges or the you know, plyo is for you, you get to see everything. Then you can decide, you know, whether it's, it's the right move for you. And then you can take them onto the gym floor and do them slower and do them with, with, with weights and dumbbells or whatever. So much opportunity. There's so much way, so many ways you can do it. Um, and then you have those people who, no matter how much you coach them, they still not get it. But I think that's, that's the challenge for trainer to be able to approach them and spend that extra three, four, five minutes after the classes. Look, it seems like you're not getting my cues over there. And, you know, like maybe, you, you know, we can try it and, and explain it better. So they go, ah, yeah, I didn't realize that. Because we don't have side, side mirrors. We don't see like we run in the back. Yeah, yeah. And no. neuro neurologically, you forget, just because we've learned the movement patterns, because we've been doing them, those movement patterns, like that friend I was talking about, she said, I can't get the deadlift. I can't, I can't get it. Cause I was giving her all the cues and then weeks and weeks have gone by now. And she's like, it clicked, it clicked. But neurologically that's, there's a lot of stuff you're doing. Yeah. You know, you're engaging a lot of things. You're trying to check in your body scanning to do everything in order to lift well. And it's a lot for someone who hasn't done that stuff before. So you have to be patient as a trainer and also you have to be patient as a participant because it's not going to come yeah. straight away. You're not going to suddenly start lifting. 70 kilos, 80 uh, kilos off the floor. You especially know? it is when someone has bad habits already. So it's not just like, this is how it should be. It's like, my body wants to do it this way, which is like faulty way, like exposing yeah, the yeah, lower exactly. back in inflection, not understanding what is the neutral spine and how to lock it up. 
And that's why actually simple explanation, like how, what you do with your legs, what you do with your arches, what you do with your pelvis, what you do with your chest, shoulders, shoulder yeah. blades, elbows in, and realizing what set position is. And that applies to most of the exercises that we do. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. I think Body Pump teaches that very well on the setup before the warm up. And mm. I, I coach it everyone all the time mm. because that simple thing with what you do with your whole body and the sequence of doing it gives you the plan okay check one two okay done done boom now now i'm strong now mm. i can lift yeah most people don't know that if you can throw a bunch of cues at them they still don't understand the m more basic stuff what they do with their feet for example yeah but like any of these things you're not going to get it on the first go you're not going if you're brand new you're not going to get it on the second go it's going to take time and you kind of have to be a little bit, um, uh, it's humbling going to classes mm -hmm. when you haven't, you know, because you, you think you're going to be fine. And then you realize, actually, no, I don't know how to move that way. Or for example, I used to be on the rowing machine all the time, even after I had been qualified as a trainer and realized until I went to a class where the, the guy was an expert on the row rower, I wasn't rowing properly, you know, and so what I had to there? learn, um, I had to learn that kind of technique again and slow it all down as opposed to pull, pull, you know, because I would have been used to doing the rower in a class environment where it was for time, let's say 40 on, 20 off, say, and you just go, 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 pull, you know, technique goes, the away. Technique goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I went to this particular class um, a couple of years ago, he slowed it all down and he said, you know, you need to get back into your deadlift style technique on the rower. You yeah. know, so it's the hinge. The legs. Yeah. yeah, it was the hinge and the power. And when I slowed it all, I said, you'll be more efficient. You'll become more powerful. Safer back. It. Yeah, you won't have to go at it so aggressively in order to achieve this, the same things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm always learning. You know, I'm a trainer and I would have thought I know how to row. And likely going to use stronger muscle groups to the major lift yeah. in that. But yeah. like like that, you know, I'm not going to claim I know everything because I'm a trainer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. You so learn every day. You learn every day and you realize, actually, I wasn't doing that right. Um. So yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's something that I think everybody should have accessibility to and everyone should have an opportunity to try without feeling that they have to be already somewhat into fitness before they turn up, you know? Hey, even for someone with 10 years experience, there's never mm. uh, that everything what they know is it's hundred percent. There's mm. always space for improvement, you know, like mm. it's, it's good for a fitness professional not to think that they know it all already. This new research coming up, there's new trends and, you know, it's always good to have open mind and being mm. able to just pick up a course and say, mm. well, you know, like a friend, Andres, uh, he's like, oh, I was on strength conditioning. What did you learn? Well, it was based for athletes, but I can learn this and I can apply it for everyday people as well. A bit, a bit of uh, strength assessment, for example. Yeah. Exactly. So no matter how long you're in the fitness industry, it's good to, to, to study a little bit. Absolutely. I think you can always be learning new things and um, you can always be open to new ways of training as well as a trainer. You know, I mean, I'm, I know I was joking earlier, I'm not a big spin person. I just mean it's not my first exercise of choice, yeah. but that's not to say I'm not going to be open to trying all new things. I've tried so many different classes in the last couple of years. A rebound, you know, on the little trampolines. <laughs> we brought it to Holy Ireland. Holy God. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, at the end, before I went into the class, I was like, this will be fine. I was... It's tough. it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. You know, so you, you realize there's all these different types. It can be fun as well. Yeah. But like, I was like, okay, there's so many different ways, yeah. you know, to train. Now, it wouldn't be for me to do all of the time, but it was a brilliant class and I loved it. Um, so, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's my take on the whole fitness thing. Try it. Try it. And what do you see people doing most wrong in classes? Let's say just observing it as what's, what's the worst people do? Um, mm, I suppose like because the style of classes I'm generally teaching are hit style, everything's fast. So, you know, it. I have to be very aware as a trainer, if I'm going to do that, that I don't put moves in there that are too complicated because what you realize is I might be proficient in that move, but not everybody is. And um, particularly when you see things go overhead, you see bars go overhead, you know, so and um, the one move I uh, one move that I've been asked the most about, which is so interesting, is the clean and press. 
Because I think it's a move that's fairly self-explanatory, but you realize actually Simple. it's not. It is not. People don't find it as easy and I've had to break it down and slow it down and it takes quite a while. So I don't do those kind of moves and my, obviously body pump is different, but if I'm doing a uh, class of my own, I won't put those in unless I'm really sure that there's people in the room that are yeah. proficient and stuff like that. Like I said about the burpee, things like that. People just jumping for the floor as opposed to breaking the movement down, squat, plank, squat, jump you know, breaking it right down. Um, and I'll always say in a class, do not do the jumping if you don't want to do the jumping. Walk it out, walk it in, whatever. Um, and the other thing I suppose I see a good bit of is people are very interested in the calorie burn of a class. And I'm not, you know, I do like to see, but it's not the be all and end all. I wear a watch, I wear a fitness strap because I like to see what I'm doing as a trainer. But I don't, um, it doesn't, it can't substitute for the intuitive knowing whether you're working hard enough or not. True. So that's where I've often said to people, you know, they'd be looking at their watches and um, telling me their, their readings or whatever. And I'm like, that's great. But I, if you didn't bring the watch today, do you know, did you work hard? Did you push? Because you don't need the watch to tell you whether you did or you didn't. Now it's great stats. I love stats. Look, and I love looking at my Garmin <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But it's it's only because I'm interested, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I do know when I'm teaching a class, I can tell by my voice <laughs> and by whether I'm pushing or whether I know I could give more or whether I'm at my max. You know, so that's another thing. I'm kind of like the old um, fitness trackers are great. Love them. But they shouldn't be dictating to you whether you need to work more or rest more. You should you should know. They are actually quite a distraction. I, I used to cycle, I used to do mountain biking and I had this really fancy uh, Garmin Edge uh, and it has map and it had like everything was there, elevation and, you know, the angles and your heart rate and I'm cycling up the hill, beautiful scenery and I'm looking down on numbers. Yeah. It's addictive. Yeah. And yeah. it's like and you, it is. You, you're looking at it. And since then I just realized I don't even need heart rate monitor. I would use it just for a map if I'm somewhere new, but just to know my heart rate, you should feel it. Yeah. You know? now, and I don't want to sound hypocritical because I am the person who puts on the strap and I am the person who puts on the watch. But I think it's because I enjoy knowing whether that class I taught was as difficult as the last one or how did I find, you know, I'm just interested, but I wouldn't need it to know whether I need to push more. I don't need it to buzz and tell me push a little harder. I know whether I am or I am. not Now I'm not, a f I'm not fully up to speed on these new, um, the whoop and stuff like that that people are wearing that gives you about the recovery and people are using them to know whether have I recovered to the strain and all the sleep patterns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. Technology is fantastic, but it goes back to the same as nutrition. And you, you need feel to it. know. And you feel like, it. You have to have yeah. some idea yourself whether, yeah, I shouldn't train today because I know my sleep wasn't great and therefore I'm going to lift badly and I'm going to do something stupid. You know, yeah. you know yourself whether that's, you should know yourself. Technology is great and it's a great asset and it's great information to have on the side, but you got to listen to the inner, the inner voice, you know, and some days I'll do a deadlift and I'll put the extra weight on because I feel I'm going to go for it today. It feels good. And some days I'll go, no, I'm not even going to try today because I know it doesn't feel good. You know, so you got to, you got to listen to the inner, you know, it's the same as the nutrition, you know yourself. Yeah. You know, it's like the little devil and the little angel, <laughs> you know, you know, so you got to listen if you want to be in, if you want to be in it long term, that's the way to go. And do you get injuries? Touch wood. No, I have never been injured. I am. I'm afraid to say really? that. Never. Wow. How do you do that? I'm terrified actually to say that because it feels like I'm jinxing. I've never broken a limb <laughs> in my life. I've never, I've never had anything. So um, perhaps it's good start late. I'm joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, but listen, I have seen so many injuries and I feel so sorry for people because it happens in ways. Sometimes obviously it can be you lift wrong or you, you know, you push too far. And sometimes it can be just something silly. You trip. You see it in the gym all the time. People trip over things or, you know, there's equipment on the floor and it's just one of those things, you know, you got to be aware. And I suppose I always say to people in my classes as well, we do a little thing at the start, kind of a warm up, and then we do a little kicker. And the idea is to be mindful. Are you in the room? Are you in the room now? Are you present? Are you aware of what your feet are doing? Don't just go through the motions. Be present in the room, because when you're not, that's when something goes wrong. 
that's when you do something silly. That's when you, you know, it's particularly if I'm using benches or steps, you got to say to people, be aware if you're going to jump over this, you got to be present because you see someone go over and that's an ankle and that's it. Yeah. You're out for whatever. So, um, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an amazing person when it comes to recovery and mobility and flexibility. I, I'm not, I could be doing a lot more than I do. Um, it's important. But you don't get injuries. So that is um, also, you know. I do stretch. I do. I do stretch, but I probably don't stretch as much as I should. Do you have favorite exercises? And then, yeah. And then why? It was funny. Well, I've mentioned them so many times, but I always get slagged about it anyway. But um, I do love the burpees and I do love any movement like that where it's quick and explosive. So I love anything that's um, like a box jump or. But that's because I like those athletic type of movements. Um, I like the buzz that you get from them. So I'm not talking about benefits or, you know, what's the best move to be doing. I It's how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, you know, in a class and it's suddenly, you know, you got to do 10 burpees or whatever, I love that. I know they're controversial because not everyone can it's do them. They're not very good it for everybody. Challenge. Or if you don't do them right, you're wasting your time. But burpees and deadlifts. And deadlifts took me a long time to really find my my way with them. And now that I have, there's, well, actually, dead, and pull-ups. It's three. So how many pull-ups can you do? So now I can do seven. That's unbroken. pretty impressive. Um, I'm happy now because two and a half years ago, I couldn't do one. So, so how um, did you start it? What, what did you do? It's funny because um, there was a fitness test in, one, in F45 where part of it was you got points for pull-ups. And at the time, I think I got my chin over the bar <laughs> for one, but it was, you know, it was a struggle. And I always said I'd, I would love to be able to do a pull-up. So we have the bar here that you can put on the kitchen frame. Um, so I think it was either my husband or my brother. Someone had told me about this website that was called 50pullups.com. So I know there's obviously plenty of ways to do it when, you know, using the bands and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's no magic formula. But this 50pullups.com just gave me that structure of a little program. So, what so it was all, it was all slow descends. It was eccentrics, right? So you jump over up, and over and over and over. Jump up so and you don't even jump up. Yeah. Down. Yeah. So you use a stool. So I have videos of me on my Instagram and I look back at them now. And um, so the, the so plan, you're just lowering yourself down. So literally I wanted to learn from the get go overhand wide grip strict pull ups. So I was like, if I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the right way. So it was literally a program of. You'd day one, day three, day five, day seven, day nine, whatever. It went on for, it was every second day. And you had to do X number of reps and X number of sets. So all it was was slow eccentrics. And um, so you had a stool to make sure that when you got up to the, when you're at the top of the bar, you're not jumping mm -hmm. so that you can kind of just engage. And then you slowly descended until you were at um, full and then you stepped on the stool and you went back up again and it was over and over and over. But the the point of it was to learn how to engage your lats yeah. and to stop the swinging. When I look at the first video I did, I'm sw like <laughs> the swinging, you know, the knees are going. And so I had to learn, you know, and then I started videoing myself to see if I was doing what I was meant to be doing. So obviously it's the same as your deadlift, you know, like lock in, shoulders away from the ears, engage your lats and then slowly come down from the bar. I had to do it over and over. And I was in. My back was so sore. I couldn't believe how sore it was. Um, and I kept doing that, followed the program. And then I got my first, first one. And then that's addictive, you know, when you pull yourself up off the floor, I was like, like literally went from hanging. Now like, you're 5% of population or less. I was like, this is so empowering. Yeah. It feels so empowering. And then there was obviously um, all the other stuff. I just, don't get me wrong. All the other stuff you do in the gym and all the strength training you do is obviously going to stand to you, you know, and everything else that you're doing. But you, if you want to be good at something, you got to practice the thing, as they say. So there's no point in trying to, I wish I could do a pull up. Well, then practice pull ups. You need to stick with it. You as need well. to stick with it. And yeah. I, I, used to, I remember I was taking off the days and um, I had calluses on my hands because, you know, I was sore and I was tired. And but I could see in the videos that I was getting better. That in itself is addictive, you know, and um, that's how it happened. Mm. And then one became, you know, two and two became three. And, uh, so and don't get me wrong, I went backwards then because once so, you stop. Yeah, yeah. That's what I find always. Like if you don't do pull ups and yeah. you just do bent over rows, you're, you're sort of like a, that sort of uh, vertical uh, kind of 
direction, you're not going to get the same strength there. Yeah, you can't, but you can't be a master of all things, you know. And yeah. I, it was a great focus at that time. I was really enjoying it. But it was, you know, then I did it and I was like, no. And I went off and did something else. And then I came back to try and do some and I was, had gone back a few steps. Mm-hmm. which is understandable, you know? So it's like anything, you kind of keep Prioritizing. All, yeah, you got to keep all the plates spinning, you know, if you want to do them all. Can't you gotta, do everything 100%. No, I just wanted to be able to do them and, and they feel amazing. And it's the mm-hmm. same as when you lift that bar off the floor in a deadlift, you feel so strong, you know? And for a woman, um, I love the way it's gone away from, you know, skinny and whatever. It's now about being strong, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so important, you know? And I think it's, women should be on the gym floor beside anyone else who's on the gym floor and not feel they don't, of course, you know, are not entitled to be. All sorts of ages. Yeah. Uh, And even from from teenagers until uh, people in their eighties, there's always appropriate exercise for everyone, even with injuries, disabilities, all of that stuff. But you would have always put the deadlifts down to the, the big guys on the gym floor, the belts on and all this kind of stuff. And that's, it's not the case, you know, it's, um, it's something that should be, everyone should know that movement and everyone should feel that they can stand on the gym floor and try that movement, you know? And when you get the weight off the floor, <laughs> yeah, it just feels great, you know? It just feels uh, great. And I think they should teach this in elementary schools, uh, like how to move uh, correctly. <clears throat> I think this this is like, in the past, I, at least I remember my childhood and we were like uh, post-Soviet in an mm-hmm. era where uh, fitness uh, education, like physical education was quite a priority there. Mm-hmm. I don't know that, you know, that Slovakian educational system put a high priority on having fit, mm-hmm. uh, you know, public, yeah. obviously. So, uh, but no, nobody was teaching us those type of like lifts, like in a gym. We were doing a lot of sports, obviously, and yeah, athletics, sports, yeah. athletics. And so I think it would be quite beneficial if kids would actually learn from professional, you know, how to do a squat correctly and how to understand posture and those things. Yeah. And look, it's a lesson for life. It's a skill for life. <clears throat> and once you don't become consumed at an early age with the aesthetics, which I think I'm always a bit worried about with young girls and, you, you know, looking a certain way and having abs and whatever else, you know, it's about how, how do you move? How do you stay fit? How do you, you know, live well? Um, Unless you are, your goal is to compete or something else. You know, I think it's very, you just have to be very careful. I'm I'm always very aware, especially with my kids, even like body image stuff. And you just want to be very, you know, I want them to be fit, healthy. um, If they want to be able to run fast or whatever it is they want to be able to do. But I don't want it to be about how you look doing that. Do you think there's a risk in social media for kids these days? I didn't grow up with social media. No, neither neither did you. No, and we didn't have internet back then, and uh, you know all you could see was the movies. And we have mm. Terminator, Rambo, Rocky. Yeah, exactly. It was always there. You know, it was there. Yeah, it was always there. Magazines were always there. Um, and I, I need to be very conscious as well because I would put posts up sometimes that I've done a certain thing in the gym, and then I'm very aware that actually. I don't want to be promoting certain, um, you know, that it's about the aesthetics or, or whatever. It's, for me, it's the whole thing. Obviously, yes, I'm not going to say it doesn't. I mean, I like to look well, but I also like to feel well. And I also like to know that I feel strong. So there's a bigger picture, if you know what I mean, to me. Um, and I actually, I look at other people on Instagram and they can have their leg. You know, I want to be more flexible. I look at things like that too. I'm like, I want to be everything, you know, but... You can't be everything and you also have to, to learn your body and what's, what you're able to do. Um, but yeah, I think with the kids as well, obviously in Ireland, there's a lot of sports in school, not every school, like my school wasn't a GAA school. Obviously a lot of them are. Um, so the kids are aware of sports and they are like athletics and stuff like that at an early age. But I didn't find my school was very, my secondary school was very, um, it was hockey. I think it was hockey or nothing. And I wasn't into hockey. You know, so there was, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was kind of um, promoted, you know, so maybe that's why I didn't find it when I was younger. But also there's a really big demographic of teenage girls who drop out of sport in Ireland at a certain age. That's an issue. Why? There was a TV program on it recently even. Um, Well, they're trying to understand what that is, you know, is that body, body conscious, more body conscious, more body aware, feel, you know, that 
they're they're a bit conscious of how they look and maybe the clothes that you have to wear the sport like there's a there's a bigger psychological thing going on you know and something recent um i don't know well like i mean i think teenage girls in general um drop out of sport for they just find other interests you know boys seem to stick with their football <clears throat> whatever girls not so well not so much um but i think as well it's very important to find something that you really i hope that like my daughter she's found dancing and that's her thing we had tried other things gaa and other things it's her thing hmm. so because it's her thing i hope that it'll be always with her you know and that's the key so if it's something that you've always been um into but yeah i suppose hormones everything I, you know but girls need to be encouraged i suppose to feel that there are other things out there and other sports that are open to you you know if it's not your school what your school are offering or the there gym are, there yeah. are other things you know so um or classes yeah like i look at my son when he was going to karate there was some girls down there five six seven eight nine and then teenage girls and they just looked badass yeah they're in the gear <laughs> they're and i i just thought it was amazing you know it's like amazing like they found their thing and it's karate yeah you know and martial arts, it's fantastic like you know that's the skill for life like they have some regime they have to follow some instructions and work towards something you know but also it's an inner it's an inner strength karate you know it's a discipline and um, you know you're strong and you know you can take care of yourself but you 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 don't display you know it's very much a yeah um a quiet discipline i think it's amazing but, i um, think those uh type of kids or teenagers young adults who have a coach mentor in martial arts they actually won't be bullying other people it's less likely they will have that confidence so then have to prove how strong they are how fit they are how, yeah exactly, how well they can exactly. fight it's usually the other guys who don't have that discipline or mentoring yeah, exactly so that's why going into a club like a karate club for example there's there's a bit of mentoring mm. going on and that will have an impact on these young people later yeah. on yeah absolutely and th and that's it like so another know. a role model let's say another father figure not just the dad maybe their dad is an alcoholic and not doing well in anything mm. and then they have this another male figure who at least they can aspire to yeah and it's just a, it's it's that form of discipline and in that karate um club that my son was in like some of the moms started learning as <laughs> beginners and i just thought that was phenomenal like i just think i just think it's i think it's brilliant i think anyone putting themselves out there and if that was the message of this for me whether it's my kids or whether it's people following me or whether it's just people my age it's just put yourself out there and give it a go because life's too short life is too short and things happen and so what if you think people are going to be looking at you and you know what i said to a friend of mine the other day she's like the gym floor you know i was um I was lifting these weights and I think people were watching me and I was like, I hate to break it to you. Everyone's watching themselves in the mirror. No one's watching you. I mean, and I meant that. And then, you know, and I said, don't be conscious that people are, people are, everyone's just interested in themselves. Everyone is there for their thing. So you have to just push yourself forward and go, yeah, I'm going to try it. So what? What's the worst that's going to happen? You didn't like it. You fell, you know, you felt embarrassed. If you're in a safe place and a safe gym, they should make you feel or a safe class. You know, you should you should feel encouraged to try, um, and yeah, that's that's the message I take out of it. Just say yes to things. Just try it. Try a class. You know. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a life philosophy? Not really. Um, no. Like I mean, again, I know it all sounds very cliche, but it's like be kind, be cool, be nice. Be nice to others and um, help other people up, you know, help other people if you can in whatever discipline. I'm not just talking about fitness. Obviously, that's something that I feel I could help someone with because it's something I'm educated in. But whatever it is, help others just because, you know, them shining brighter is not going to affect your flame, as they say, you know. So um, I don't understand why we all wouldn't just help each other. Be nice, be kind. If it's not a nice thing to say, then don't say it. And um, that's it. <laughs> cool. Cool. And where our viewers or listeners can find you if you want to be found? 
Oh, I'm sure. Well, I'm just on, I'm just on Instagram. Um, I did have an active page during COVID where we had, I mean, I have a lot of classes and stuff on the hip You were coaching online. I was coaching online and recorded Is them. Is it still and, going on? Well, I'm not doing anything at home now because thankfully we're all let out. Hopefully for, That's for, the, now. for, the, for the foreseeable. <laughs> so at the moment, the Zooms are gone. Um, I think we all needed a break from the online training, but there are loads of classes still on the website. Um, if anyone ever wants to try one at home themselves and feel safe that no one's watching, if that's something that intimidates people. Um, or yeah, on the Instagram. But um, So what's that website? Uh, the hitfityogi.ie. Um, and yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Me. That was, that was so much interesting. fun. <laughs> I like to talk. I apologize for that. <laughs> well, that'll be a part two. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Otto. Thank you. Bye.